Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. <clears throat> All right. So uh, last time, uh, last time, uh, we talked about the the last sort of main idea uh, is we talked about square root of x and x squared. So that was uh, the last kind of thing uh, that we talked about. Uh, so now we're going to do uh, we're going to do this again, except instead of doing uh, square root and squaring function, we're going to do cube root and cubing function. <coughs> uh, the result uh, looks like this. We say, okay, uh, let let f of x be the cube root of uh, x. <coughs> the first question is, uh, what is the domain? So no domain was explicitly given. Uh, as a result, uh, the domain of f is the natural domain <coughs> of the cube root function. But that just kicks the can a little bit further down the road. Uh, now you've got to remember, what is the domain of the cube root function? It's all reals. So which is uh, the reals? So you could write this uh, with inequalities like this, uh, in interval notation like this. And then as a plot, you know, something like this, the whole thing. <clears throat> Two, uh, the range. So it also has a, uh, an implicit rule. Uh, so no range was explicitly specified. As a result, the range is the reals. Again, to make the vending machine analogy, that is like uh, if you make a if you make a purchase order for a vending machine, yet you do not say what items you want to be on display, then every item is on display. Uh, three. <coughs> we could compute the image now. So, what is the uh, conceptually? What is the image? Like maybe, so how about, how about this? In the vending machine analogy, the image is the set of all items on display, which also you can get, right? Because it might be the case that uh, for some vending machines, you walk up to it uh, and you see something that's on display, but in fact, there's no button to get one of those things. All right. So, you know, in more uh, mathy kind of terms. This is the set of all y values, uh, which can be obtained. All right, to, to figure out the answer to this question, uh, it's helpful to make a, to make a table of values. <coughs> Uh, then we'll plot. So how about x and uh, cube root of x? <coughs> we'll do uh, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, all right, so then this is calculator work here. 
Uh, so for example, to evaluate negative uh, 4, the cube root of negative 4 in your calculator, uh, you could type, uh, for example, in my calculator, in parentheses negative 4, and then caret in parentheses 1 divide 3. So that's how, how you can get the job done in the calculator. So my calculator is reporting uh, for this value negative uh, 1.6-ish. <coughs> this one negative 1.4. This one negative 1.3. This one I can do in my head, negative 1, 0. And then now the rest of them should be quite easy. What are they going to be? Without the negative. Okay, so then 1, uh, 1.3, uh, 1.4, and 1.6. And again, that's, of course, just to one decimal place. Uh, so notice that uh, the values in the table are almost a palindrome. That is to say, it's almost this reads the same forward and backwards, uh, except for the sign. So that's like an anti-palindrome. So if it were exactly a palindrome, we'd expect to see something symmetric, like with a bilateral symmetry, like a human has bilateral symmetry. Uh, but because it's an anti-palindrome, there's going to be a symmetry, but it's going to be, instead of, instead of bilateral symmetry, the, one of the sides is going to be turned upside down. <coughs> All right. So then plotting this. Uh, we went out to 4. Uh, so I'll say that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, but they only go up to 2, so I'll say that this is 1 and 2, negative 1 and negative 2. So this is 2. <coughs> And this one here is 1. So the, the vertical and horizontal scale is not the same. Um, <coughs> all right. So then plotting these points, 0, 0 is a point. Uh, 1, 1 is a point. Uh, 1, 2. 2, 1.3 is a point. Uh, 3, 1.4 is a point. And 4, 1.6 is a point. Okay, so then now, if, uh, if it was exactly a palindrome, so I'll connect those points so that you can see them a little better. <coughs> if it was exactly a palindrome, then we could get the other side by just flipping it over there, and you'd see kind of like a, a V-looking thing. Uh, but it won't be, it's not exactly a palindrome, it's an anti-palindrome, so then we'll flip it uh, that way and then also down. And the result's going to look like this. So negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1.3, negative 3, negative 1.4, and negative 4, negative 1.6. So it will look like this. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, now we're not talking about the square root function right now. We're talking about the cube root function, but I want to remind you that the shape of the square root function is this. So that's what square root looks like. So cube root is kind of similar to it on the right side anyway, but uh, notably, the square root function has nothing on, the, on its left, but the cube root does. Why is it uh, that when you look at a plot, the square root has nothing on its left, uh, but the cube root does? Only 
yeah. Uh, well, in, in inputs, non-negative inputs, right? So the fact that there's nothing on the left for the square root function, that's, that's a, a visual manifestation of you can't put negative inputs into a square root. So uh, this, is, this is what cube root looks like. Y is cube root of X. This is uh, square root. <coughs> so concerning these two, uh, you know, this is, uh, remember, square root is second radical. And cube root is third radical, radical three. Uh, what about fourth radical, fourth root? Would it look more like a square root or more like cube root? It looked more like square root uh, in the sense that it only has a right side. What about uh, like 11th root? <laughs> what would it look more like? Like that one in the sense that it has two sides. All right, but that's, a, that's kind of a, an aside. Uh, the question that we're trying to address right now is what is the image? All reals. All reals. The image is all reals uh, because, uh, remember, the image is a set of all y values which can be obtained. So uh, I could ask, uh, here's a particular, uh, here's a particular uh, y value, like that one right there. Is it possible to get that y value? And the answer is yes, and you can see that because if you put a horizontal line right there, then the question becomes, does that uh, horizontal line intersect anywhere? And the answer is yes, it does. In fact, uh, choose any y value that you, that you care to name, there's gonna be an intersection. Uh, as a result, uh, as a result, the image Uh, is the reals. <laughs> so all the reals. Uh, alternatively, to give you a different way to think about it, uh, the image, the image uh, is, it, I can tell you this is the way it works in my head, is that I imagine in my mind's eye the whole plot, uh, and then here I have it, and then I take it and just, just mash it, just, and then uh, where would all these points land? Every, everything would be covered, right? Every single point would be covered. Uh, whereas for this one, if we take this one, you know, little bitty, little bitty mash, like that, uh, you don't get anything down here. Uh, so the image is the reals. All right, question four uh, concerning uh, cube root. Uh, is it injective? Okay, the answer is yes, but why? Right. So the answer is, uh, is yes, because it passes the horizontal line test. And remember that the horizontal line test is uh, that every horizontal line intersects at most once. So in fact, in this case, every horizontal line intersects exactly once. Uh, with the mashing point of view, uh, it is that well, when you when you, when you when you do the mash, when you when you mash it like that, uh, is it the case that uh, every one of these points is hit by just one point on the graph? So notice that, uh, for example, that one, that point right there, is only hit by that one. It's not hit by any other. Whereas, uh, for a counterexample, you can imagine if you took a parabola and then mashed it all the points that get covered would get covered twice, except for the vertex, which gets covered just once. But uh, the, the non-vertex points would get covered twice, once with the left arm and the other with the right arm. Uh, so how about, is it surjective? Okay, so then what is the, so surjective is a nice fancy math word, uh, but what in the end does that question what what in the end is being asked here? Uh, that's asking whether or not it's a function. That's what the vertical. At least one at, right. So in particular, the question is: Is it the case that the range is equal to the image? So, 
That could be true or false. But in this specific case, which one is it? True. It is true, right? Because we said, well, because no range was explicit, the range is the reals. And then we calculated the image. The image is the reals. So is it the case that the reals is, are equal to the reals? Yes, it is the case. So this is true. So that, that is to say that uh, the cube root function is like a vending machine uh, where uh, every, item that, uh, uh, every item that's on display, in fact, there's a button that you can get it. Nothing is left out. And furthermore, every button does just one thing. So because it's injective, the cube root function is injective and surjective, then what's our name for this? Bijective. Good. Any question about the cube root function? Yes? Uh, to, 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 an to answer that, for example, uh, on Friday, d this is just remembering some stuff from Friday. Uh, on Friday, uh, we talked about the square root function. And uh, the square root function, let f of x be the square root of x. Uh, well, the domain, this is just quoting from last time. Uh, is in inter is x greater than or equal to zero uh, to the range is the reals and three the image and th again this is just quoting from last time uh, the image is that the output is stuff greater than or equal to zero uh, you can see that because uh, well at this point we're supposed to have memorized the shape of square root. It looks like this. Uh, so, um, if you took, uh, if you took If you took this uh, red plot and you you somehow like covered it in, in green paint, and then you you took it and you and you mashed it just onto the x-axis, but it was covered in green paint, right? So you mash it, covered in green paint. What what uh, points would be colored green? All of all of these points would be colored green. Alternatively. Uh, you can ask the question like this. You can say, well, concerning all vertical lines, which, which of these will intersect the square root? So none of these do. So I won't color any of them green. Uh, but all of these do. So I will color all of these green. However you like to think about it. Uh, this here is the domain. Now, if we take that uh, square root function again, and instead of covering it with uh, green paint, if we cover it with blue paint, and instead of mash m mashing it like this, if we mash it like this, so we cover it in blue paint and mash it like that, uh, these are the points that would get colored, like that. Uh, if you don't like the mashy thing, then you could say, well, concerning the horizontal lines, which of them will intersect? Well, none of these uh, intersect the plot, but all of these do. This is the image. Then the question, uh, th th this was more or less just to remind you of some things, but uh, the question in the end. Uh, was that, uh, well, for, we asked, is it injective? The answer is yes, because it passes the horizontal line test. 
that is to say, every horizontal line intersects at most once, uh, four, uh, no, <laughs> five is what comes after four, is it, uh, is it surjective? Well, here's the thing, is that uh, the range, the question is, is it the case that the range is equal to the image? That's what the surjective question is. So, so uh, the range is all of the reals. So uh, you could draw it like this. Image. The range is uh, this. Whereas the image is this. And the question is, is are these two sets the same? And the answer is no. So the, the, the question, is, is the square root surjective? The answer is no. So uh, these are not the same. And therefore, uh, not surjective. Did you have a question? Surjective also means uh, it passes at least towards uh, once or more. Yes. The, well, ev it means that every item in the range is once or more. So the distinction is, and the, reason, the place where students get a, in a little bit of trouble, is that uh, in, in high school, very often, these two words are synonyms. Uh, wi and what, what's happening is that uh, the, the uh, high school instructor is usually tacitly assuming uh, that uh, the range is always the image. But the problem, the problem with that assumption and the reason why, why that, uh, it's not discussed that way at university is because if you tacitly assume that the range is the image, then every function is by definition surjective. If the range is the image, then it's impossible for a function not to be surjective. And it would be, it would, it would, that would, that's the same as saying it would be impossible, like physically impossible, for there to be a vending machine with an item in it but no button wired to it. Right? But uh, th that's surely possible. <coughs> uh, maybe, maybe one more of these would be helpful. <coughs> uh, so suppose that instead of a formula, we just draw a picture. <coughs> So there's a, just, some, just some drawing I just made. Okay, so my first question is that, uh, is this a function? How can you tell? Does it pass the vertical line test? Okay, well, uh, the vertical line test says uh, that every vertical line must intersect to zero or one times. So I see zero. 1, 0, 1, 0. So the answer is yes, because it passes the vertical line test. Uh, since it's a function, and since we're talking about tests, I could ask, well, in that case, is it, is it an injective function? Now the answer is no, because now the question is, is it the case that every horizontal line intersects zero or one times? So I see zero, one, two, three, two, one, zero. So then the answer is uh, no, because it fails the horizontal line test. Uh, but now here's a here's a different request. Uh, please sketch uh, the image, and please sketch the domain. So that means I want you to draw something on the plot. So 
where on the plot will, you, will, <clears throat> will we need to draw something which illustrates the image? I, I, I want to do this, I want to sketch the image. And my question is, is what, what general region do we need to draw in? Like, is the image going to be over here? Is it going to be here? Y-axis? Yeah. The image is a subset of the y-axis. So in particular, uh, the way you can do it is, again, with the mashing analogy. You can say, OK, well, suppose that, I, suppose that we take all those red points and, and cover them with blue paint, and then just take it and just mash them all to the y-axis, which ones would receive color. Uh, alternatively, if you don't like that point of view, you can say, well, concerning all of these lines, I'll color all of the ones where there is an intersection. So from here, yes, no, right? Can you see it? So it'll look like this. <clears throat> so that's the image. Some of them receive color twice. That, that's fine. What that, what that means, though, is that it's not injective. Uh, OK, so we sketched the image. How about the domain? Yeah, now, we're gonna, now we need to indicate some subset of the, uh, of the x-axis. So again, you can imagine with the mashing analogy, uh, take, the, take the, the, the plot, color it with your favorite color paint. I'll use green paint, since I have a green pen here. And then I'll mash it onto the x-axis. If you don't like the mashing thing, you consider all vertical lines, and you color all of those that have an intersection with the plot. So not colored, color, not colored, color, not colored. So the domain, in fact, it's this set, and it, con and it just so happens that that set consists of two disconnected pieces. And that's fine. Right? Domains can consist of two disconnected pieces. I mean, for example, you could say that uh, uh, concerning the weak, the amount of the, uh, you know, the domain the, uh, for, for scheduling for the university consists of five disconnected pieces, right? Uh, uh, an interval of time on Monday, an interval of time on Tuesday, an interval of time on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they're disconnected, right? There's no overlap. It's fine. Monday, Tuesday. Any question about this one? All right. <coughs> So now the cubing function. <coughs> OK, so the domain. <coughs> Again, none was explicitly given, so the domain of this function <coughs> is the domain of x is the natural domain of x cubed. <coughs> which is all reals. <coughs> so you could write that, uh, well, it's the reals. You could write it with inequalities like this as an interval like this and as a plot like this. <coughs> the range. Because none was given, the range is the reals. <coughs> so uh, as an interval like this, uh, at, with inequalities like, like this, uh, an interval notation like this, 
uh, and as a plot, I'll draw it like this. Vertically to remind us that uh, range is always talking about uh, y values. Uh, three, the image. This one requires a little bit of consideration. <coughs> So we'll take the same strategy that we've had, that we've used so many times before. So x and x cubed. So how about negative three, negative two, <coughs> negative one, zero, one, two, three. Okay, cubing these things. 3 cubed is big, 27. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. 1 cubed is 1. 0 cubed is 0. The rest of the numbers are easy because it's the same as the other numbers except with opposite sign. <coughs> so again, this is, a, this is an anti-palindrome, if you like. So I'm not going to try and uh, sketch this perfectly. Uh, because, well, uh, the inputs range from negative 3 to 3, which is perfectly manageable, but uh, the outputs go from negative 27 to positive 27, so I'm not going to try and make 27 tick marks. Uh, but I'll give you the general idea. <coughs> the general idea is that uh, it goes to the origin. <coughs> and it goes up very, very quickly after that. And uh, the kind of idea I'd like for you to have in mind is it's kind of like a parabola, uh, except uh, except it's like someone took the, the, the left arm of the parabola, which was up, and twisted it down. <coughs> All right. Uh, the image, <coughs> therefore, the image is all the reals. <coughs> that is to say that notice that uh, all of the y-axis is covered. <coughs> is it injective? Yes, because it passes uh, the horizontal line test. Is it surjective? Yes, because the range is the image. Because this function is injective and surjective, it is bijective. <coughs> so we've considered a, a, a pair of functions now, the cube root function and the cubing function. So now I want you to see them together. <coughs> The cube root function looks like this. So I'll draw the right, s the right side in red and the left side in green. So that's what uh, cube root looks like. And then when you draw the, the cubing function, it looks like that. And uh, what I want you to see is that uh, if I was a perfect artist, then uh, we'd be able to take the cube root function, its picture, pick it up, we'd have to twist it, 
turn it over, uh, then we could make we could make this red part fit on top of that red part, and as a result of that, the green parts would also line up. It would all line up, and you could do it going either way. You could you could fit this here, and you could fit that one there. That would work. And this is uh, <coughs> this is uh, you know for 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 the cube roots, but for but for square, the story is different. For square, now it's like, <coughs> or, you know, we talked about this on Friday, but it, now that we have cube root also, I want to have it all on the same page so you can see it. Square root looks like this. Uh, and there is no, for the square root, uh, there's no green part if you take my if you take my meaning there's no there's no there's no other part for me to draw uh, for the squaring function it looks like this uh, and it does have a have an other part so for the square root it is possible to pick up the red, give it a twist, and then you could put it on top of here, and it would fit. Uh, but you can't go the other way. You can't take the square, you can't take the parabola, give it a twist, put this red part on top of that red part, and it would all fit, because the green part would have nowhere to go. The green part would have nowhere it's to not, go. It's not about the red part not being able to do it. The, it's about the green part not being Right. Yeah, exactly. So specifically, let's have a look. Is the parabola injective? It is not, right? It fails the horizontal line test. So I'll say, I'll say that, that it's not, uh, not injective. Now, if I think, I think it's clear that uh, if you were to that you can't you can't pick up the graph of the parabola, give it a twist, and lay it on top of the graph of the square root, and there'd be nothing, uh, you know, you know, there's there's no green here is what I'm trying to say. But if we were to do it anyway, if we were to like try, what you would observe is this: you'd see that the red parts line up, so that part would look good. That would be great. Uh, but the green part would be like this. And now I have a question. Concerning this uh, drawing that we have here, taking the red and green together, uh, is that the plot of a function? No, because it fails the vertical line test, right? So this line is indicating that the result is not a function. Now, here's the question. Can you see it in your mind's eye? What if you grabbed this whole ensemble right here? Grabbed hold of it with the green part, the red part, and the horizontal line, and it's all connected rigidly. You, you grab it, give it a twist, and try and set this red part on top of that red part. What will, what will become of this uh, horizontal line? It'll become that vertical line. So the fact, uh, the fact that this is not injective means that this procedure of giving it a twist and putting it on, on, on top of here means that when you do that, the result won't be a function. It also means that if you take something that's not a function and give it a twist, then it couldn't possibly be injective. Because when you do this twisting action, which we'll define later more rigorously, uh, when you do this twisting thing, Horizontal lines become vertical lines and vice versa. <clears throat> okay. But notice that it works. It, it's always going to work with these. So notice that uh, every horizontal line intersects once. And then after you do the twist, every vertical line intersects once. Okay, great. So now another function. Uh, we'll 
we'll say let f of x be 1 over x. This function is important enough to have a name. It's called the reciprocal function. It's called the reciprocal function because, well, in the end, what, whatever input you give it, it outputs the reciprocal. So if you, if you put in uh, 5 over 2, it outputs 2 over 5. All right, so then the domain, again, because no domain is explicitly given, uh, the natural domain, uh, the, the domain of f, is the natural domain of 1 over x. Uh, there's no radical, that's nice, but uh, there is a division. Uh, and as a result, we can't have x is 0. So it's anything except x is 0, which as an interval could be written in this way. Negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. And as a plot, uh, is everything except 0. Okay, the range uh, well again the rule is that uh, when no range is explicitly given the range is the reals because none was given the image well this requires a little bit of work again uh, we'll take the strategy of plotting x and 1 over x. So I'll plug in negative 2, negative 1, and I'll plug in uh, what? Negative 2 thirds and negative 1 third. So those are not evenly spaced. <laughs> then 1 third, 2 thirds, uh, one, two. All right. Now remember, it's called the reciprocal function because whatever thing you give it, it outputs the reciprocal. So what if we plug in a third? Three, right? Because it outputs three over one. Uh, if you plug in two thirds, three halves, which I'll write down as 1.5. The reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of 2 is uh, half. Okay, now the other numbers are just the same, uh, except negative. So negative 3, uh, negative 1.5, negative 1, negative 0 0.5. No, I don't require you to write the decimals, but I've just, I, I'm going to plot it so it's a little easier on my on my head if I do it that way <clears throat> those little ones are a third and two-thirds So two and a half, one and one, two thirds and one and a half, one third and three. Uh, the other points can be obtained by taking those ones and reflecting them that way to get something that would be symmetric, and then reflecting them down to get something that would be anti-symmetric. Uh, so here. And if you were to plot a whole bunch of other points, this is the shape that would emerge. Okay, very interesting. So uh, 
you know, this, this function has a problem at zero in the sense that you can't divide by zero. So this is not really a rigorous math thought, uh, but kind of gives you a, a little bit of an intuition about the way things are. Uh, division by zero is not defined, of course, but uh, this, this plot is kind of an illustration of what might happen if you, if you tried to divide by zero, right? You can imagine, you know, running along on this plot, getting closer to zero all the time, watch what happens. You know, you all the way up to infinity, just you explode from both sides. So this is, you know, you might imagine it like what it might look like if you tried to divide by zero. Uh, okay. Uh, good. This shape uh, is important enough to have a name. The name of this shape is hyperbola. That is by th there's a, there's a, a family of shapes uh, that uh, sort of you know they're a family they're related to each other. This shape is called hyperbola. Uh, we already know one that count sounds kind of like that parabola. And yes, they're definitely related in a way that we're not really going to get into in this class, but do know that they're related. Uh, the word hyperbola kind of sounds like the word hyperbole, but uh, they're not related. Those two words are not related at all. <coughs> Uh, good. So that's that's what it looks like. The question that we were asking is, what is the image? So what's the image? Not the reals. Except zero, right? Because if you do the mashing thing, right? Color color the whole graph color the whole plot, and then psh, mash it. Uh, I think it's clear that uh, all of the positive y values will be, will be covered, and all the negative y values will be covered. But there's no point that's going to land on the origin when you do that. There's no point that's going to be right there. Alternatively, uh, all of the y values, all, all of the constant y lines, horizontal lines, with negative y value have intersection. All the ones with positive y value have intersection. But uh, the x-axis itself, y equals 0, has no intersection. So the image is uh, y not 0, which you could write in interval notation as negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. And you could draw like this. Then for is it injective? The answer is yes, because it passes the horizontal line test. In the mashy thing, that is, every point is covered at most once. Or with horizontal lines, uh, every horizontal line has at most one intersection. Then. Uh, five, is it surjective? No, it's not. It is not. Because remember, the question is, uh, the, the surjective question is, is it the case that the range is equal to the image? Well, the range, we said, was the reals. So the range is this. Uh, the image, we just talked about it. So the range is all of that. The image is that. And now the question, in a sense, comes down to, are those two pictures the same picture? And the answer is no. So those are not the same. And therefore, uh, no, this function is not surjective. And again, it is like, uh, because no range was specified, 
because, because when we made our purchase order for the vending machine, we didn't say what we wanted to be on display. <coughs> the manufacturer put everything on display, including a zero. Right? Zero is on display. But uh, how can you get a zero? You can't, right? You can't. So that's, uh, you know, you, you can't get, there's no button, there's no X you could put in so that Y equals zero would come out. All right, that's all that we have uh, for today. So have a nice Monday.